What is up fellow developers, my name is Tyler Potts. In this video we're going to be looking at animated CSS gradients. Um, you can see here we have three different types of uh, animated gradients. We have a animated background gradient which goes from a pink to a red. Um, we have animated text which goes from a blue to a yellow. And then we have this button which is actually my favourite part of this which is a animated button where it goes from a light blue to a royal blue but it doesn't really look like a gradient, but it is a gradient. And it, um, I think it looks really cool. So let's get on with this video. So we're going to create a new pen by going over to the right here and clicking new pen. We're going to be using code pen for this tutorial. I hope that is okay. Um, and on this HTML section, we're going to write a few elements. We're going to create a wrapper, which is going to have our overall wrapper element. We'll create a h1, which is going to say, hello world. We're then going to have a button, which is going to say um, huff, "Hover me" with an exclamation mark, um, and that's all we need because this is a pure CSS tool. We won't be using JavaScript or any more HTML. That is all we need for this. And we're going to start off by doing some resets. So the first resets we're going to be doing is resetting the margin, uh, just because I don't I want it all to be sat quite flush. Uh, we're going to set padding, we're going to set the box sizing to border box and font family equal to sans serif. Now once we have done that we can move on to the wrapper. So we're, first thing we are going to animate is the wrapper. Well we're actually going to style it all up first. We're going to set the width to 100 VW, the height to 100 VH so it fits the whole viewport. We're then going to say display flex flex direction column um, align items center to bring it to the middle um, and let's let's just save that and so that's looking all right oh, well, that went weird um, so that's looking all right let's um, actually style up the oh let's add some padding to the top we'll give it about seven oh about 75 pixels of padding off at the top. Uh, once we've done that, we're actually going to style up the H1 quickly. We're going to set the font size to be about 72 pixels. The font weight to be as bold as we can. Um, we're going to set some margin on the bottom of this to be about 40 pixels, just to move it away from the button. Um, and we'll give this a text align center. So that is looking good. Um, finally, let's style up the button real quick. So we're going to go down here. We're going to say button. Um, the button is going to have a width of about maybe 250 pixels, a height of about 50 pixels, um, a border radius of 8 pixels. It needs to be slightly rounded in my opinion. We're going to reset the appearance to none, the border to none, outline to none, and the cursor to be a pointer. Um, and that is looking about right. I we need to make sure the text is right, so we're gonna say text. Oh, sorry, not text. It's actually font size, uh, twenty four pixels. The font weight will be about seven hundred. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now let's actually add in the animations. So to start off with the animations, we want actually a background with a linear gradient because we want it to be linear from one point to the next. We're going to say two right because we want to go from the left to the right. And in this case, we're maybe going to say red to blue because it's going to be quite standing out. There we go. But we can't really animate from red to blue in this circumstance because this red and this blue actually sit right there. There's nowhere to animate to. And the, re the way we can combat this is by saying background size 300%. So this is going to move the blue completely out of the way and stretch this whole thing. So it gives us room to animate the red to the blue. Now we're going to use keyframes to animate the text and the background. Um, and to do that, we're going to say animation. We're going to create one called flow. It's going to be about 15 seconds. And we're going to say ease in out for the uh, the cubic bezier or the timing function, should I say. Um, so let's create this keyframe. I actually want to give this a color 
of white as well the text it's annoying me that it's not <laughs> so at the bottom we're going to say keyframes and we're going to give this the flow attribute and we're going to say zero percent is equal to background position so how we're going to animate this is by moving the background position from zero 50% so center on the y-axis but starting from zero on the um, zero from the x-axis and um, center on the y-axis and then we're going to go to 50% and we're going to say we're going to move it all the way to the other side so we're going to say background size zero to 50 or oh, zero to 50% not zero 100% to 50 percent we're then going to set this to another zero or no 100 percent and this is going to say background position i've just realized i've done size there that should be position and we're going to say the background position is going to be again zero and 50 percent so it goes back in a loop now we should see that this over the course of 15 seconds goes from the red all the way over to the blue gradient which is perfect so that is the first step in this video next step is the text so the text is a little bit more tricky because we've got to do some sort of clipping because this is also going to be using the same system where we animate a background um, but you'll see in a second why we can't just animate background normally on text so we're going to say linear gradient we're going to say to we're going to say to left um, and this one we're going to say green to yellow so you're going to see it's actually added the background color, not on the text, but as an actual background, which is what you'd expect to happen. Now, we're actually going to set the background size to 300% like the um, wrapper. Um, so you can see it's stretched over a little. It's going to start at the yellow and move straight over to the green. But we actually want to go here and say from background size, we're going to say... To actually clip this to the text, we need to use a property called background clip and we need to use text. So we're going to clip it to the text. We also need uh, to prefix this with WebKicks. It doesn't actually work in a lot of um, browsers by default. You have to actually attach WebKit to it. So it works in Firefox, Safari and Chrome and I believe Oprah too and a few other browsers. It doesn't work in IE um, and that is just what for the uh, text. It worked, the background um, gradient on anything else will work, just the clipping doesn't work. Now you'll see that the background color has disappeared because we clipped it to the text. But the issue is the text is still white because it has a color of white. To fix this, we're gonna use something called a WebKit text fill color and we're going to say transparent and that's going to make the text invisible on webkit browsers which is going to give it a yellow color now to animate this we are going to do the exact same way we animated the background we're going to give it a flow animation for about five seconds we're going to say ease no we're going to actually give this one a linear and we'll say infinite now if we hit save you'll see it goes from yellow to green and then from green back to yellow. And that is perfect. So now we've got two different animating elements. Obviously, you probably don't want to have them all animating at once because it kind of um, hurts your eyes. So I'm going to change the background. I'm going to basically disable the background and just have white now. So we've seen the background happening. This is kind of cool, but I mean, maybe not so cool. We'll say purple to violet maybe red to violet I feel like that will give a good effect there we go so that's kind of cool uh, now let's do the, my favorite part which is the button so animating the button is actually different we ain't going to be using keyframes for this we're going to be using a hover effect now to get this effect we need to simply do what we've kind of done above so we need to give this a background of a linear gradient. We need to say to right or to whichever direction you want. Uh, to bottom right gives a cool effect. I'll show you that soon. And for this one, we're gonna say light blue to a royal blue. But this is gonna actually give us a gradient. You can see it kind of goes from 
a light blue to a royal blue as a gradient. I don't want that. I want them to be a flat color connecting to each other. So we're going to get we're going to set both of the starting points at 50%. So as you can see, it gives this effect. It kind of looks like a pill, you know, the red choose the red pill, blue pill sort of thing. Kind of what it reminds me of. <laughs> don't ask me why. Um, but once we've done that, obviously, it still looks kind of weird. So we want to set the background size to be at least 200%. And that is going to push it right over. So now 100% is the light blue. And the other 100% of the 200% background size is the royal blue. So to animate this, we need to now give this a... Well, actually, we need to say background position. And we're going to set this to 0, 50%. Okay, so we've got the background from position to zero to zero we're now going to use a huffer and you can see we're using um s c s s to achieve using the and huffer which is a sas um, property or sas way of writing things so we're going to write background position we're going to sell it f to 100 percent and 50 percent what's going to get set the color of the text to white um, I actually could set the color of the text here to a lighter or dark gray, but a lighter than black. So now, when we hover the oh, when we hover it, you'll see it's going to instantly turn blue, which is not what we want. We need a transition on this, so we're going to say transition zero point, or we'll give it one second, and we're going to set this to be ease out. So now, when we hover. You can see it does this really nice fade the text and drag in the right side of the button, which I think is really, really cool. Um, so it brings it straight over and it's kind of effect. I see this on quite a lot of websites as well. And the com combination of this and this really stand out. If we reactivate the background, we're going to get this really ugly looking uh, landing page. But I mean, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, so. You can see it's all animating, it's all changing colours, and I think it looks really cool overall, although the background kind of is hard, makes it hard to read. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, then leave it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to chat with other like-minded developers like yourself, then join my Discord channel um, or server, and the link is in the description. Thanks for watching this video. Good night and peace out.